Abraham, Yitzhak, Kakwan, Yitzhak, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, continually, 24-7, what are we doing? We sitting around here with looking at the things that you got to deal with in this earth. You said, think on the things of, of, in heaven. Meditate on those things. Look at uh, Isaiah 51. Go to Isaiah 51 and 21. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. He said, here it is, thou afflicted. Who's more afflicted than the 12 tribes of Israel? He's saying, thou drunken, but not with wine. You drunken, you are drunk, but you ain't drunk from drinking wine. Just say thy power, the most high, and thy power that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. She say, taking out of thy hand the cup of trembling. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. We ain't gonna have to drink this cup of fury from the most high again. It surely wasn't talking about from the time we came out of Egyptian captivity. It surely wasn't talking about the time we came out of Assyrian captivity. It surely wasn't talking about coming out of the time we came out of Babylonian captivity or the Persian Mede or the Greeks or the Romans or the Byzantine Empire all the way to now, the Renaissance period to now. This is it. This is what he's saying. It does say the most high power, thy power, most high in thy power, your power, Israel, that pleaded the cause of his people. He pleaded the cause of his people, 12 tribes of Israel. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. They take out of my hand the cup of trembling. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. This is what he said, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. He's going to bring these plagues, these curses upon those that afflict us. You're concerned about some kind of physical balance. You got to deal with these spirits we talked about earlier. That's for real. Them angels. Where they at? On the earth. Ready for the commandment of the Most High. And they will not transgress His word. What do you say? But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. Which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. I mean, look at us now. We're being just <laughs> taken out. So another scripture you can look at is Lamentations 4.22. Oh, there, Lamentations 4.22. But he said what? Let's say the most high, verse 22. And thy power that pleaded the cause of this people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the treads of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. That's for now. Go to Lamentations 4 and 22. Lamentations 4 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So who is Zion? Isaiah 51, 16. And I, and I have put my words in thy mouth. We're defining who Zion is. I have put the words, my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So Zion are the twelve tribes of Israel. Going back to Lamentations 4.22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, O twelve tribes of Israel. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. 
So he shall no more carry us away into captivity. So it couldn't be any captivity that I name. This is about now. The last captivity we're going to be in. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. The Edom here represents the indigenous so-called Caucasian race. He will discover thy sins. He will discover your sins. As it is written. Because when you look at, go to 2nd Ezra. Wow, we're right there. 2nd Ezra 6 and 7. Then I said, I and said. 2nd Ezra 6 and 7. Then I said, I and said. What shall be the part in the son of other times? It's no different than what was asked in Matthew 24 and 3. Hold that though. We coming back there. It's the same thing was asked here. Matthew 24 and 3. And he sat upon the mountain of Mount of Zion Olives. The disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? What's going to be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the world, right? So here we see in 2 Ezra 6 and 7, it says, Then I said, I have said, What shall be the part of the sun of times? Or when shall be the end of the first, and the beginning of it that follow it? This world that we're in now. Well, it's going to be the end of this world we're in now and the world that's going to follow after this world is dissolved as we read in 2 Peter 3 and 10. And what's going to follow this world that we're in now? And he said it to me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, going all the way back to Genesis 25 and 25. When Jacob and Esau were born, and 26, of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So, that's why in the 90s, Spirit gave me, we got next. It just, you know, took off during the time, our period of time now. But I mean, a lot of us, we are little saying, we got next. From what it says here, Jacob's the beginning of that follower. So, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob's the beginning of that follower. So that's why he says, he will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. He's going to discover their sins. What they have done wrong in breaking the law, statute, commandments out of Most High. Most High is fair. So, and when he when he discover them, he's going to he's going to do certain things to bring about his judgment. The plagues are coming. What you going to do when it comes to you? Hopefully you will be in the spirit with the most high. Look at all. Um, Look at uh, Jeremiah 50. And 4. Jeremiah 50 and 4. In those days and in that time, said the Most High, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah, all 12 tribes, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, together, going and weeping, Crying, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the most high their power. So that's part of what we gotta do too. You're not gonna escape it, or you're not gonna make it. 
You're too prideful to fulfill what he's saying? How are you going to be there? Going to seek the most high with weeping. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces to the word, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the most high in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Come and let us join ourselves with the most high with a perpetual covenant that will not be forgotten. That's the greatness and the goodness of the Most High. We just got to see it, people. And not deviate from what it is that it says we're going to do. How are you going to do this if you're against doing it? You're against doing it, then you're going to be part of the two-third bunch that's going to perish. You're going to be a goat on the left side. Look at this. Jeremiah 50, since we're here. Verse 25, it says, The Most High have opened his armory. That's his weapons of war. We read about the spirits of vengeance. The Most High has opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. We read some of them earlier. But this is the work of the Most High power of who? Power of armies, power of angels in the land of the Chaldeans. So you understand, Chaldeans, Babylon, America's Babylon. Babal coming from the word Babal. Hebrew word Babal, which means confusion. A whole lot of confusion here. Say, so come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day has come, the time of their visitation. He said, well, look upon the sins of Edom. I mean, he looked upon the sins of us. We didn't tell the Israel. And he brought us down. What goes around, comes around. What comes around, goes around. It says, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Most High, our power, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon. Call it Together, all these that have missiles against Babylon. These plagues, people. All ye that bend the bow, all ye that have missiles, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she have done. Do unto her. Remember, most I said, I'm going to visit your iniquity, your sins. Eat them. That's what he just said. According to all that she have done, do unto her. For she have been proud against the Most High, against the Holy One of Israel. Say, tell you, I mean, y'all, what y'all do, y'all, y'all put the Bibles, y'all say the Most High is you themselves. You can't deny that. Say the Mashiach Yahushua was them, the Jesus Christ that you have in this Bible. I mean, you changed to Jesus Christ, but at the time, I mean, Caesar Borgia, that's who that white image is. You had that in 1492. So the J came about around approximately 13, I mean, excuse me, 1630. You already had Caesar Borgia operating amongst all these nations. You can't deny that. I mean, you can't with your Jesus Christ with this Bible. That's who you say it is to this day. Verse 30, therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, said the Most High. He said, I'm going to visit your sins. These plagues come upon you, upon them. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, most proud of sin, said the Most High, power of hosts, power of angels, power of armies of angels. For that day has come, the time that I will visit thee. 
you, 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 you need me go back? Habitations 4.22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, O twelve tribes of Israel, our punishment is accomplished. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So it's the last captivity we have to go in. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. He will discover your sins. What do you say? Jeremiah 50, verse 31. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, said the most high power of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I, that's the most high, will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble, shall tumble and fall. And the most proud shall tumble and fall. And none shall raise him up. They don't tumble and fall. And none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in the cities. And it shall devour all round about. Let me say the eyes of the most high upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy from off the face of the earth. You would have said. And I will kindle a fire in his cities. It shall devour all round about him. That's say the most high. But see, Israel not understanding. Look at uh, Jeremiah 49, verse 10. You say, but I have made Esau bare. So he made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. He better hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. He will be no more. That's in the end. The very end. What do you tell you, Israel? Jeremiah 51 and 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. He said with us, the 12 tribes of Israel, we are his battle axe and weapons of war. He said, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. I mean, you think it was, you think it's about anybody else beside Israel? Go to verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. The portion that we have is not like them. For he is the former of all things. And Israel, see that? Israel. Is the rod of his inheritance. The Most High of hosts is his name. So it said that Israel is the rod of his inheritance. See, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. With the Israelites. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. The horse and the rider. The one that's riding on the horse. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. 
And with thee will I break in pieces, old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces, the young man and the maid. I also will break in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock. So all you preachers, you know, you just following the false prophets and so forth, false preachers and false pastors and so forth. He said, with thee, I will also break in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock. That's the preacher and those that's following him. That's not teaching his truth. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. The farmers and the oxen that they use, the farmer. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Captains and rulers are going to be broken pieces by the children of Israel. The most high is not a man, he should lie. His words does not go forth from his mouth and come back void. Future prophecy. He said, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, O destroying kingdom. Somebody against you. Said the Most High, which dis destroyed all the earth. Who did that? Polluted the air, still polluting the air. Chemtrails all up in the air. Polluted the land. You look at the land. Some place you got all this land, but you can't plant anything because the land is just defiled. People's minds lie to the people. Destroy. That's why I say our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because they follow the knowledge that you gave them. From your religious instruction to the Negroes in the United States of America from 1620 to now. That's why everybody better come back to the large test commandments for the most high. Point blank. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, O destroying kingdom, said the most high. What what nation is more powerful than America? which destroyed all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. It will say, gonna roll you down from the rocks. It will make thee a burnt mountain. Like we said, you come with fire to judge and make war. Look. Go to Jeremiah. 16, 16. Say, Behold, I will send for many fishes, said the Most High, and they shall fish them. See, that's what we're doing now. We're fishing our brothers and sisters out of this unforsaken mindset, like a robot T from the robots that's causing the robot T's to follow the unadulterated wickedness of. Their minds to come back to the lost that's coming to the most high and have faith in him, fear the most high, cry out to the most high and repent. That's for forgiveness of our sins. As we fish it for the men. Asking them to come back into the lost that's coming to the most high before it's too late. It's a work in progress, but we got to make it happen. We can't be slacking what we have to do and make it just go down. But it's going down. It's going down, as he said. It does not go out of his mouth and come back void. So we, we as the children of Israel, have to not get caught up in the plagues that are written in this Bible. Jeremiah 16, 16, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Most High, and they shall fish them. And after, it's only a certain amount of time that this truth will come out. And we fish them for those that the Most High want us to fish for. He said, And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain. So he said, Oh, burnt mountain. They're going to hunt them from every mountain, which is kingdoms, mountain mean kingdoms, and from every hill, every little kingdom, and out of the holes of the rock. They're going to run up in the caves of the rocks. You're going to hunt them from out of there. But my eyes are upon all their ways, see? That's why you're going to bring the judgment upon the sins of Edom.
and all those that are following the sins of Edom. For my eyes are upon their all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Ain't I mean, no hidden things from the Most High. That's why I say, you know your hidden places. They're not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first I recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Hear that? He going to recompense the iniquity, your wickedness, and your sins double. Because they have defiled my land. They have filled mine inheritance with their carcasses of their detestable and the abominable things. Come on, you got culturized pork. Gave raise, you got all kind of things going on in the land of Israel now. Mm -hmm. Sad, but it's real, people. I don't know what to tell you except for uh, the word of the Most High is true. But it'll come out to righteousness before it's too late. This is payback, Jeremiah 25, 15. But thus said the most high power of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this, this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. See, so take the cup, this cup of fury. That's a nation wrath. He said, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad. They're going to get a strong attitude to be mad. Because of the sword that I will send among them. See? That's plagues. That's curses that they're going to send among them. To who? These nations pay back. Something else. But see, people think that it's not going to happen. Look. Hold on. Uh, Psalms. 78. Let my people go. Look what the Most High did. Psalm 78 and 49. He cast upon them, just these Egyptians who was in the captivity of the Egyptians, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Now, you know, okay, we got to define that and make so you know, because some of you might not know this concerning these angels. As we read earlier about, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, right? So look at Psalms 104 and 4. Psalms 104 and 4, so you don't get it twisted. Who maketh his angels spirits. So it's going to say angel, or it can say spirits. Angels or spirits. The same entity. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flaming fire. Flaming fire. It's like you say, they're going to come and burn people up. And that fire is his word. Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, adversaries mean enemies. Every one of them, he ain't excluding none of them. He said, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. They that robbed us going to get robbed. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. He said, for I will restore health unto thee, talking to the children of Israel. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. He's going to heal us of everything that's wrong with us. Because he wounds and he heals. 
said the most high. Because they called thee an outcast? Who is they? Everybody looked down upon us. Saying, this is Zion, this is the 12 tribes of Israel, this is Israel. And they're going to say that. This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Hmm. That's what they're going to say. Go to Wisdom of Solomon 5. Wisdom of Solomon, 5th chapter. They're going to say, this is Zion. That's what they're going to say. We know what they're going to say. Through the Spirit of the Most High. That's what he already got it already outlined. Remember, it's not going to go out of his mouth and come back void. He already got it outlined here. That's what they're going to say. Look, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then said a righteous man stand in great boldness in the face of such as afflicted him and made no account of his labor. Gonna stand in great boldness in the face of such as afflicted us and made no account of our labors. When they see it, they shall be filled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Remember, they're gonna say what they say. We hear because they say what they're gonna say. This, this is Zion in Jeremiah 30 and 17. This is Zion. Whom no man seeketh after, nobody's seeking after us. So they will be amazed at the strangers of our salvation. That's power from the authority coming to Israel on this earth. So far beyond all they look for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. They ain't repenting because they want to ask the most high to forgive them, but they're gonna be angry. Remember, say the nation's gonna be mad. Say, they're gonna be repenting and for anguish of spirit, sell say within themselves. This was he. Like it says right here, in verse 17, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh out of, this is he, same thing they going to say, this is, this was he, whom we had sometime in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools count this life madness and this end to be without honor. This is what they're going to say. How was he numbered among the children of the Most High and his light is among the saints? Screaming it. How's he numbered among the children of the Most High? His number is among the saints. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth. Therefore have we erred from the way of following the law, statute, commandments of the Most High. You see this all is past tense. Erred is from now to salvation coming to the Israel. I wish more brothers would check this out. Therefore have we erred, that's past tense, from now to the time the salvation is coming to Jacob. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Why? Verse 7. We rid ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Wickedness everywhere. Evil wherever they go. Hell wherever they go. And destruction. Destroying everywhere. Yeah, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. Listen at this closely. But as for the way of the Most High, but as for the way of a Mashiach Yahushai, we have not known it. Remember it said in verse 2, they shall be amazed at the strangers of his salvation. That's when partial authority is coming to the Israelites. Remember Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it. They're following. They're going to be amazed at the strangers of our salvation. They're going to say, this is what they're going to be saying. As for the way of the Most High and the Mashiach, Yavashai, we have not known it. So no matter how much you're going to try and teach them for whatever reason you're doing it, they're not going to know this. That's what it says. You're going to make the Most High be a liar? You're going to do something contrary to what the Most High says? Better check yourself. Look at Job 12 and 24. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth. The chief of the people of the earth right now is the Edomites. So-called white men. America's 
he taketh away the heart, the mind of the chief of the people of the earth, and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. So he's already said he's going to do this. What do you think? He a man that he should lie? I don't think so. Revelation 11, 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. See? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Come on up hither. Come on up here. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, which is the chariot. When you read Psalms 104 and 3. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud, making of his clouds, his chariots. And their enemies beheld them. Now we know what they're going to be saying. When we go up in these clouds, which are these chariots, what we call the IFOs, the identified flying objects, our enemies beheld them. They're going to beheld us. Right? No different than what it says in 1 Thessalonians. 4.16 First Thessalonians 4 and 16 For the most I want my shakab shai himself shall descend from heaven because he ascended up in heaven to my shakab shai got to descend come down from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the most high and the dead that have died by Hashem, Hashem, shall rise first. In the name of the Lord and Savior, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds that we just read in Revelation 11, 11 and 12. To me, O Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, do the glory of the Most High in the air. In the air. And so shall we ever be with O Mashiach and the Most High. We'll comfort one another with these words. See, we're going. And the most high word shall be as it is written. It's going to happen. That's why it's so important that we prepare ourselves every day for the coming of Mashiach to be ready. That we could be blameless and without spots of wickedness. Because, you know, we're reading all these scriptures, everybody going to con conclude from what you've been programmed in believing Christianity or whatever you believe in, that is something that's contrary to the word when it's not. We're reading those scriptures with the Spirit of the Most High. Joel 3 and 7. He said, Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Here he said, He's going to return us from the places where He scattered us in, in the places that you sold us in. He said, He's going to return your recompense upon your own head. He said, I will sell your sons. He said, I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the most I have spoken it. He said, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, among these other nations outside of the twelve tribes of Israel. Prepare wars. He ain't talking to us. These nations have all this ordinance of weapons of war and so forth. He said, prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. To let them come up. Bring up, bring all your mighty men. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares, beat your farm utensils into swords. 
and your puny hoofs and the spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. I got missiles too. Assume yourselves and come, all ye heathen, all ye nations outside of the twelve tribes of Israel, and gather yourselves together round about. There to cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Most High. Cause your angels to come down, O Most High. Let the heathen be awakened. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Let you know where to come. Come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. He said, put you in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. The sickle is that, that, that little uh, instrument of, that you use to harvest. Or cut down weeds. It's like a, a, a golf club. But it have little edges on it. On each side of it. That you can cut it this way and cut it that way. And you swing it. It says, put you in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Remember the most high's eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. Said their wickedness is great. You know, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. For their wickedness. Said their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Most High, well, my second shot is near in the valley of decision. Say the sun and the moon shall not shall be darkened because of all the uh, explosions, the destruction, the wrath of the Most High. You ain't gonna see no sun and moon. It's gonna be nothing but soot, nothing but darkness, like it was when the twin towers came down. You ain't seen no air. You ain't seen no nothing. You ain't seen me. You ain't seen nothing in the sky. All you seen was shh. Look up in the sky, you see nothing but darkness. Say the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now, ain't the reason why it's going to withdraw their shining? Because you ain't gonna be able to see no stars for all the soot and all the the smoke and the dust and destruction that's gonna be in the air. The Most High shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Most High will be the hope of his people, the children of Israel, and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Most High, your power, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass to her anymore. Ain't no strangers coming to anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine. And the hills shall flow with milk. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Most High. And shall water the valley of Shittim. I mean, that's blessings right there. Egypt shall be a desolation. Egypt going to be desolate. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. Hear that? The Edomites going to be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they shed innocent blood in their land. Hear that? Come on. But Judah shall dwell forever. And Jerusalem from generation to generation. I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Most High dwelleth in Zion. Look at verse 19 again. It says, For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Zechariah 11 and 4. Thus said the Most High, my power, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors Slay them. See, we were sold to our enemies from slave men and slave women. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Whose possessors slay them. They slay us and hold themselves, what? Not guilty. How many times have we been killed and the verdict comes down? Not guilty. Nobody has to pay for killing us. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. That's why the most I say going to get them. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Most High, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. Oh, yeah. If you have free labor, no matter what nation you are, for over 400 years, how rich would you be? 
Hear what it say? And they that sell them say, we're on auction blocks sold to our enemies every day since 1492 to the late 1800s and into the 1900s. And some still dealing with this. Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. What are preachers that's supposed to be pitying what's going on with us being killed? I told you. It's just going to be a phase, and this thing is forgot about. Nobody talk about it no more. But we're going to keep on talking about it, because the Most High Word is not going out void, period. Better hear the word of the Most High. I say, you say going to give you double? That's justified. And that's justice because of the fact that, look, look. See, nobody cry about this. Nobody to show you how much, how they slay us and hold themselves not guilty. What about this? Go to Isaiah 40, chapter. Verse 1 and verse 2. Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, said your power. Say, comfort there's comfort in this. Speaking comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Like he said, he would not lead us into captivity anymore. So our warfare is accomplished. That her iniquity is pardoned. So our iniquity is pardoned. See, for she has received of the Most High's hand double for all her sins. So we receive double for all our sins. For breaking the most high's laws. That's why he said he's gonna discover your sins. Eat them. He's gonna discover your wickedness and your sins. That's why he most of told us in Revelation 18. He said, verse 5, he said, For her sins have reached under heaven. Why he told us not to, you know, do the things that they're doing in sinning and wickedness. See, for her sins have reached under heaven. The most high said, hey, the eyes of the most high are upon the silver kingdom. I will destroy them out the, out the face of the earth. Amos 9 and 8. He said, for her sins have reached under heaven, and most high have remembered her iniquities. Most high remembered her sins and wickedness. He said, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double under her, double according to her works. We got double. We just read it. So now most high said, double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. That's what he said. So, verse 8. It says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. One day, her plagues gonna come. Death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the most high power who judges her. Say. So where are you gonna be when this go down? Who are you gonna be with? What side are you gonna be on? You gonna be against the most high? You think you gonna make it? Being against him? Better get with the program. Before it's too late. Only so long that the most high gonna really allow. This is where he said he's going to send for fishers. They shall fish them. Then he's going to send for the hunters. And when he send for the hunters, you got a choice. Choose life or death. That's it. It's always been that way with the Most High. Baruch 2 and 1. Therefore, the Most High have made good his word which he promised, excuse me, which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judge Israel and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Israel and Judah. So he made good his word against us. Like he gonna make the good the word against these heathen nations to bring upon us great plagues. He brought upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem, according to the things that were written in the law of Moses. He told us he's going to do this. Like he's telling you prophecy of what he's going to do to you. 
do to those nations that are not of the 12 tribes of Israel, as we've been reading. He's not a man who should lie. He's not going to go out of his mouth and come back void. That a man should eat the flesh of his own son, hear that? And the flesh of his own daughter, starving to death. Moreover, he have delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, to be a reproach, a disgrace, and a desolation among all the people round about, where the Most High have scattered them. See, that's what he did to us. Thus we were cast down. We the children of Israel were cast down. And not exalted. Why? Because we have sinned against the Most High our power. And have not been obedient unto his voice. See. He told us. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. He told us this. Yashorala, Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, and it shall come to pass. It's future prophecy. If, that's a condition, thou shalt hearken, listen diligently unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High, thy power, will set thee on high, above all nations of the earth. This is what the kingdom is going to be about. Us coming back to the law, such commandments of the Most High, he's going to set us on high, above all nations of the earth. Most High will. I'm talking about the children of Israel. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken, meaning listen, unto the voice of the Most High thy power. Now you jump to verse 15. You say we're going to be blessed if we listen to the Most High our power. And all these blessings that you see coming between uh, verse 3 to 14, that's in the kingdom. We're going to have all of this. The children of Israel. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe to do all these command, his commandments, his commandments, not ours, his commandments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he told us, you do what I say, do. You follow my rules and regulations, my laws, statutes, commandments. You're going to be blessed. You don't want to follow them, you're going to be cursed. I'm going to bring all these plagues upon you. Like he's going to bring all the plagues that we'll be reading about tonight. Among the